This wasn't really deep woods but it was far enough in the forest that there was no sound from the nearby neighborhood I live in. So my friend and I have been thinking about going into the woods and making a fort of sorts and spending the night out there one night after we were finished. So we would meet up outside the trail entrance on our bikes and would ride in with hatchets and flashlights and would spend most of the day out there and a bit of the night out there and we had finished the floor and decided to dig a fire pit so we could have that going and sit by the fire at night since it was winter and was cold. So we dug a hole about a foot in the ground with a clear space two feet all the way around, for the fire and go ahead and get out of the woods. The next day we meet up like usual I have a bag of kindling while he has a lighter and we had cut some branches and cut them up into some nice reasonable sticks for a fire the night before and left them out there to dry with them being on a tree suspended above the ground. We go out to our fort and work on making one of the walls cutting the little trees around and cutting good branches and holding them together with rope. We continue all throughout the day and when it starts becoming dusk we go ahead and start making the fire. When we got it lit it was at that point of the day that it's dark enough you can barely see but still light enough you can still maneuver around without a flashlight so we keep working on the wall and when it becomes completely dark we meet up at the fire and sit for a bit just talking and enjoying the heat. I think okay well I'm gonna get up for a bit and go cut a log for us to sit on so we're not sitting so low and I start cutting the log I get three cuts in when we hear a howl instantly we're both pointing our lights in the direction of the howl and we saw a good four to five pair of eyes staring back at us from that kind of glare you see when you point a light in an animal's eyes. As it turns out we had attracted the attention from a pack of coyotes that live out in the forest and we were out of there as fast as we saw the eyes. Riding around the trails on our bikes as fast as our legs would push leaving our packs, my lantern, the lighter, and the hatchets. We made it to the neighborhood and kind of sat at the entrance of the trails for a bit, kind of soaking in what had just happened. We went back in about 30 minutes later to get our stuff and make sure the fire went out and wouldn't burn the forest down but we didn't stay for very long lol. I had one of those converted camper vans and was tripping around the South Island of New Zealand. The sun was setting so I had one eye out for a camping spot. Saw a huge hand painted sign that said camping. So turned off the road and into a gravel pit. There was a fresh water river, huge river rocks and beautiful trees everywhere. But what creeped me out was the number of vehicles parked in various states of decay. I'm not joking. 11 or 12 abandoned vehicles. Just rotting in the elements next to this river. And no people around. Behind the cars was a long empty paddock running up a hill towards what I immediately described as the house from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Paint flaking off the walls. One or two windows boarded up. A rickety old balcony and I'm pretty sure there was an old rocking chair there too. 2 plus 2 equals murder in my mind so I got the hell out of there. Drove for another 40 minutes after dark looking for a better spot. Ended up parking in the middle of a town. Didn't sleep a wink. This is kind of just an odd fishing story, but every summer, my family went camping on remote campsites that were typically islands in the middle of a lake, or a piece of the edge not accessible except from water. The body of water is quite big, and there are a lot of fish, but you mostly see trout and catfish for the area, nothing too big. Well, my best friend came with us this year and all the adults were drinking by the fire at dusk. It was getting darker, but the twilight illuminated the water enough to do some fishing still, so I cast off a rock with my friend by my side. I felt a bite and started to reel it in, and it was big. The biggest fish I have ever had online to date, I don't fish much, mostly for food, I was just barely able to pull the thing above the water line and we were hollering at this point for my parents to help, but they were busy drinking. The fish had to have been at least two feet long, 
My fishing pole was almost bent in half. And unfortunately as I was reeling it up, my line snapped from the weight of the fish. 60 pounds rated fishing wire. Flung it into the tree above me and I lost my lure. We freaked out and were yelling to my family about this huge fish. My dad said that there aren't any fish that big in the lake and there is no way. We were exaggerating how big it was. But even 10 years later, I brought it up and we both remember the exact same thing. A massively big fish that did not belong in that water, I still wonder what it was and how it got there. Not necessarily deep in the woods. But while camping overnight me and the rest of my scout troop. Most of us around 15 or 16, arrived to our campsite to find a single man tent occupying one of the prime spots for putting up a tent. It was out of the way enough and it was kinda late so we decided we would let the dude who appeared to be asleep stay there until the morning. A few hours later however, my friends and I had a very uneasy feeling about the tent, we decided to try and wake the guy up. We could see the outline of his body as the tent was really small, so we started to lightly kick his feet. When this didn't work we started to yell and make noise and still, the man was motionless. Realizing the reality of the possible situation, we went and got my dad who grabbed another leader that was a doctor. They opened up tent and the doctor confirmed that the mystery man was dead. The cops came like three hours later and we had to guard the tent from the younger scouts, 11 to 12 years, as we didn't want them to know cause they would have freaked out. Super creepy sitting next to this dead body with the full moon shining down on the empty desert. I was with a couple buddies hiking some trails up by Helen GA. We decided to follow some game trails off of the main trail just to see what we could come across. Around an hour into the game trail we realized we should turn back but we had made so many loops and turns that we quickly ended up lost. We started just cutting back in the general direction of the main trail and we came across a clearing with a very run down and decaying cabin. Naturally being young and dumb males we decided to explore it. The front door was just hanging and fell off when we tried to open it. Parts of the floor would collapse as we walked through. There was an old nasty looking mattress that was covered in mold and mostly decayed. A bunch of dishes laying in random places and what appeared to be a very very old ham radio. In one of the rooms we found a completely decomposed skeleton of what we assume was a dog or coyote. After exploring for a bit we decided to hit the main trail before dark set in so we could set up camp and not get lost. Have been back about 5 times since then and can never seem to find that cabin again. I was hiking in the Wasatch Mountains in August back when I was a boy scout. It was a small adventure group within the troop. We got up to the top of Mount, Olympus, not Greece, right as the weather started to change. We were on bare rock a few hundred feet above the tree line when a thunderstorm started forming. The leader made us take our hats off and ruffle up our hair. We could smell static electricity in the air and everyone who had hair long enough to move in the wind had their hair stand on end from the static. We climbed slash hiked back down the mount as dry lightning started to strike the peak with our hats off until we couldn't smell the static, and our hair could lie flat on its own. A few years ago I went hiking in New Mexico with a small group of about eight. On the fourth day one of our crew members had to drop out because they were having problems with the heat, so we had to backtrack to the nearest ranger station and get them situated. As a result we were off schedule by about 2-3 to three hours. The next campsite was nearly 7 miles away and required the use of map and compass to navigate, there were no trails. We eventually got lost as the sun began to set and we decided to cut our losses and find a suitable spot to set up camp. 
Almost immediately we started hearing a bear growling near us. It was already too late to move as the sun had mostly disappeared. We opted to have two guys walk around the clearing and bang pots together in order to scare off the bears, while the rest of us set up the bear bags. Usually when setting up bear bags you string a rope between two trees and hoist up bags containing your smellables, food, chemicals, etc. Unfortunately our makeshift campsite was in an area of heavy deadfall. The ground was littered with dead slash rotting trees. So basically our bear bags were bad. Instead of 15 feet off the ground they were maybe 5. We basically skipped dinner because we weren't sure if we had enough water to cook, considering we were still lost and needed water for the next day. Predictably the bears did not leave us alone. At this point it was pretty clear there were at least two of them. They continued the circle our camp and growl at us, keeping far enough away to where we couldn't see them. Needless to say it was a stressful night, but we all managed to get some sleep. I woke up several times to hear a bear very close, but I couldn't see them from inside my tent. The next morning we found our bear bags remained untouched. We packed up camp and finally managed to figure out where we were. When we arrived at the next camp on our trip we indulged in our one packet of dehydrated biscuits and gravy. In the days before kids my husband and I used to go wild camping. The first time we went wild camping on Dartmoor, UK National Park, using an old map, we wandered onto a bog in bad weather. It took my husband, the navigator, about three hours to find us a way out. Everywhere we stepped out feet sank into the mud and water visibly pooled on the surface of the sodden ground. We were new to wild camping and didn't have the best gear at the time. A while later we stopped in a forested area and saw police tape everywhere so we moved on. The next day we stopped off in a small B&B, pub for a meal. The bar TV was playing Wimbledon but during a news break the forested area and boy from the day before were shown. Police had found the body of a guy, 18 or so, I think, who had been camping with friends and wandered alone onto the bog in the dark. Admittedly there was alcohol involved but I'd been quite anxious wandering around that boggy moor, and it brought home that without my husband I could have quite easily died on the moor. I love wild camping but have zero sense of direction and it's hard to describe to someone who hasn't experienced it how quickly the weather can change and go from clear to fog so thick you can't see anything. I spent over a week backpacking and camping in Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument in Arizona, March of 1997. Optum is a harsh, but beautiful environment, and we had hauled all of our water in our backpacks and coordinate water resupplies. I've got to get to work here, so I'll keep this short, but we witnessed the Phoenix lights from the backcountry desert. Also, we stumbled across numerous discard piles from undocumented migrants crossing over from the Mexican border. Empty water containers, clothing, a stuffed animal, etc. Pretty heartbreaking seeing evidence of people gradually letting go of personal items in their arduous journey to a hopefully better life. Saw a bunch of other cool stuff there too, but nothing else strange or scary. Had a bad experience in Montana on some medication that affected my oxygen intake. Decided to go back on my own which entailed sleeping by myself a few nights which at 10,000 feet can be a little frightening in itself. On the last day hiking I was just exhausted. I wouldn't have been able to fend off an aggressive six-year-old. I then can across a freshly killed elk literally laying on the trail. This was a very large animal and two Europeans came across the scene exactly at the same time and just lost their minds and took off running. I was barely able to walk so I just hoped whatever killed that animal would leave me alone. I did made it back okay. 
Just this last October I was in Dolly Sods in West Virginia and somehow ended up getting turned around. I've been on at least 16 backpacking trips out west at much higher altitudes and have never gotten lost. It was long day around 15 miles with a full pack. To this day I have no idea how I ended up getting turned around. It was like an episode of the Twilight Zone. I started having thoughts that I wasn't in my reality anymore and that I would walk this trail for eternity. My brother and friend went out looking for me which I felt terrible about. I met a couple who had also been lost but had figured out where they were and I followed them out. I literally ended up going the opposite direction and to this day I have no idea how I could have been that clueless. It was a big deal and sent me into a deep depression. I'm actually fine now but I feel something strange happened in those mountains. My friends and I were determined to make it to a certain spot before setting camp so we were out well beyond dark, which I don't recommend for anyone who isn't experienced, and even then what we were doing was probably dumb. There are three of us walking up this trail when all of a sudden the guy in front says oh crap and we all freeze. Ahead of us in the dark is a pair of glowing eyes locked onto the three of us. The eyes lower while staring right at us and it looked like a cougar getting ready to jump. We are in eastern Oregon and cougars are in the area. We take a couple steps forward to see if we can get more light on it while grabbing some bear spray. Once we get a few steps forward we see it's just a deer that lowered its head to eat while still starting at us few. We head up to our spot, camp, go summit a peak and hike back down to our car the next day. In the same exact spot we saw that deer we found its carcass ripped to shreds and bloody. It had maybe been 12 hours since we were last there. We are all pretty sure that there was a cougar watching us that night, we just couldn't see it. Still messes with me sometimes when I'm out in the backcountry for a few days. I wasn't deep in the forest but my family has a cabin that we would visit often during the summer. I was an emphatic runner at the time and would run twice a day, once in the very early morning, before sunrise and I was out on this run, maybe 6 to 7 minutes away from the cabin, and I heard a loud howl from maybe 100 to 200 feet away from me. I froze instantly and looked in that direction, I couldn't see anything. But within 20 seconds I could hear the sounds of what I assume was multiple coyotes ripping into a dead deer or something. It was truly a horrifying sound that I wish I could unhear. I'm just glad I managed to quietly get back to the cabin and stay there. Ever since then I don't run without sunlight. This one still gives me chills. Me and my sister would take long trips into deep woods surrounding our secluded house. At a certain spot into the journey, a German shepherd without a collar would run out of nowhere and greet us. He was a full-grown dog and very friendly. He would follow us around for a bit and then continue on his way. Well one day we went out like any other day except our friend wasn't showing up. We didn't think too much of it until we found his body. It looked as though he was attacked by wolves with how ripped apart he was, but it doesn't look like the animal ate very much of my doggy friend at all, just sorta of tore him up and left. Later we keep walking and talking about it, until we hear a very weird sound come from the distance. It sounded like what I can only describe as maybe a large animal moaning with a sense of maybe pain slash confusion. It was far off at first but when we heard it we stopped to listen. I couldn't hear leaves moving but I heard it again. This time noticeable closer. The sound of a wailing animal but it seemed more aggressive sounding this time. Then we hear it again but it's directly on the other side of the hill we're at. Bone chilling wail, almost like a dying woman. Me and my sister bolted out of there without even thinking about each other. Just sprint all the way back to a trail that would take us home. Sometimes I wish I stayed to see what it was, 
but nope I'm good with the outcome of living. A few of us were hiking around the Blue Nile Falls in Ethiopia. After a long day walking we make it along the valley, hot, sweaty and looking forward to feeling the cool air of the falls. We're hopping over rocks and making our way across the floodplain when a shepherd starts screaming at us to stop. I jump the gap between some large rocks and look down to see a snake pit as I jump. The diameter of the moving snake is that of a car wheel. Trying to backtrack with the biggest case of Elvis legs was the hardest part. We get back to our site and get out of the car just in time to see a car flying down the road out of the campsite. It was the two guys and their dog high tailing it. About three minutes later, a truck comes flying down the road going the same direction. We realize it was the guy from the camper slash owner of the dead dog. We decide we want nothing to do with whatever is about to go down so we stuff our tent into the car with the sleeping bag still inside and tent poles still together. We drive to the Walmart in Roswell. Roswell NM at night is a whole other thing in itself, but needless to say, we didn't really sleep that night. We pieced together that most likely we heard a dog fight that ended with the smaller dog dead and the owner extremely angry. The weird croaking noise was probably a bird, but who even knows? On a three-day river kayaking slash camping trip, one of our campsites was occupied when we arrived on the second night. It was a weird family of five that said their party boat bottomed out and they had been stuck there for days. These people had clothes on a drying line, pots full of fish guts sitting everywhere, and tons of food and trash everywhere. My group, trying to be polite, engaged in conversation with the husband. I wasn't the one talking to him, but suddenly it got quiet as the husband finished a punchline to a joke with the N-bomb. My whole group told him he needed to cut that thing out immediately. All of a sudden the entire family grabbed some of their stuff, boarded the bottomed out boat, and took off down river with no problem. They left behind all of their garbage, drying clothes, fish guts, and grandma's wheelchair and were never seen again. To this day my friends and I have no idea what the hell was going on that night. My husband and I were through hiking pictured rocks in the upper peninsula. On our first night, we couldn't find the individual campsite location, so we ended up just finding a random clearing and setting up camp there. Not long after we turned in to sleep, we heard some male voices coming toward us. We listened as they got closer and closer until eventually they were standing outside our tent, speaking a language we were unfamiliar with and shining their flashlights at our tent. We were frozen with fear, thinking we were about to be attacked. As soon as my husband flicked his flashlight on, the men started to walk away. He got up to check it out, and didn't see any trace of them besides some trash they had dropped around our tent. I camped alone once in my life, though I have been in backcountry multi-day treks about three dozen times with other hikers. I set up camp in the forest only a couple miles in but I was camping illegally so I went pretty far off the trail. Night was coming and I got a nice cozy fire going as the woods darkened. Around 11 I heard noises purposeful, stalking noises in the undergrowth. I shone my headlamp out and saw at least three pairs of glowing eyes reflecting back. I know very well that coyotes almost never pick a fight with a grown woman. Yet they didn't budge when I yelled and threw rocks. The circles just bobbed along, watching. Freaked me out. I packed my tent and walked to the road and asked my friend to pick me up, I biked. I'll never do that thing again. I knew they would not attack, 
But being alone in the dark gives me such a primal fear of being eaten alive. I was wandering slash bushwhacking around some mountains in the Boise National Forest and came upon a weird abandoned campsite. There were a bunch of coke bottles, some bear bags, other miscellaneous trash. There was some irrigation piping rolled up under the bear bags. The creepiest part was a three inches tall figurine of a Catholic saint sitting above the sleeping area. I got a weird vibe so took a few pictures and got back to my car. A couple days later I went to a forest service office to report what I saw. Apparently in the last year or two there had been other similar sightings in the area. I had stumbled on part of a marijuana growing operation run by a Mexican cartel. I'm glad it was abandoned at the time. I can't imagine the people running a weed farm in the Idaho mountains would take kindly to strangers. Edit. Stumbled onto an abandoned weed growing operation run by a Mexican cartel. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.